Hey, player, welcome to another live stream here on my channel. In this live stream, we're going to be talking about five real ways to get your crush to like you back. Now, for those of you that are new here, my name is Josh. Every single Monday through Friday, I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. And in this live stream, I'm going to break down the five ways over the course of the live stream. Throughout it, I'm going to be interacting with the chat, answering questions, and doing quick chat polls just to get people's ideas as to how these ideas resonate with them, how they feel. Uh, I do want to give a special shout out to one of our new channel members, Dono the Gamer. Dono, thank you so much for being a channel member. I'm super excited to have you on board. Like I said, with the channel member perks, you can always reach out to me and we can set up a Google Hangout and chat one on one. I love talking to you guys one on one and just hearing your, your stories and your experiences. But in this live stream, I'm going to be covering five ways to get your crush to like you back. That's something I wanted to just say right there in the beginning, let you guys know what this is about. These are different things that I've learned over the years, things I've put into practice myself, um, things that I think genuinely and realistically work when it comes to getting your crush to like you back. Um, one thing I do want to say too is that at the end of this live stream, I will be putting up the timestamps. So you can always check the, it'll be the featured comment there in the bottom. And it's going to be a breakdown of all the different things I talk about in this live stream. Every question I answer, every point that I make, every sign that I show. Um, and you can just hop around to the specific point in there. Now, I want to do something. I want to say thanks to all the people here in the live stream in the chat early on. I know a bunch of you guys were excited and waiting. I haven't live streamed for, I think, two weeks now at this point. So I'm happy to be back. I want to say hi. Just do a quick rundown of everyone in the chat. So if you want to get your shout out, just say hi in the chat right now. And I'll shout you out, guys. Emma Peterson, thank you so much for being here. Lego Man, Andrew Ma uh, Matthew, Awesome 29 March, Ian Hines, Too Much Bread, Donna the Gamer, our new channel member, Sniper God Gaming, Andrew Math Matthew again, G Delgado, Vest uh, Vesti Games, BFF uh, Squad, Dabber Boy, Cowboy Sessman, Gemma, Justin Thompson, Noob Dude, uh, CJ the Asian, uh, who, did I, who did I not say so far? Rosen Yanda, Killjoy, I don't know if I said Killjoy, uh, Sophie Fuentes, Too Much Bread, Emil Muhammad Condig, Kevin Kevin, Miranda Tyner, Ashes Trash, ZN WL, ZN Wolf, I guess, uh, Elijah Wilbor, uh, Wilbon, Phoenix, Mr. Steel, uh, Mr. Steel Yo. I thought the Yo he wrote was uh, Yo in the chat. It's actually part of his name. Uh, Oziel Gomez, Lewis Gordon, Anthony, Atlanta Boy, Thomas Turner. Three mods in here, guys. Good to see you again. I love having you guys here. Hey, Tyler Wand, what is up? Cheyenne Hall, hey, how's it going? So as far as any kind of uh, personal questions that you guys have, if you have a burning question that you want me to answer, you need my advice on it right now, you can always use the Super Chat function. Just click the little Super Chat button down on the bottom where the chat is, and you can send a message. It'll pop up in front of me. I'll stop what I'm doing. I'll answer your question, give you the time that you deserve, and then I'll get back to my points. So I do want to kind of talk a little bit more about what it means to have your crush like you back, because I think for a lot of people, they see this as um, a range of different things. To some, uh, your crush liking you back means that they have the exact same feeling for you that you do, right? So if you are madly in love with your crush, the idea of your crush liking you back is that they're madly in love with you. You know, you hope that they feel the exact same way that you do about them that they do about you. To others, your crush liking you back might be something as simple as they actually pay attention to me. They actually say hi to me. They actually acknowledge me as a person. So just getting some kind of acknowledgement from your crush may feel like, you know, they like you back in some way. So I want to kind of tackle with these five different um, points. I want to kind of tackle how you can bridge the gap between those two perspectives, your crush just acknowledging you and your crush uh, also liking you back in the way that you like them. So I'm going to jump into the first point here, and then we can get into the more of the chat and the questions and stuff. But I'm curious to see. Um, I'm going to do a quick chat poll, actually, before I get into the first point here. First chat poll here. I want to know from you guys, um, do you currently have a crush right now? Is there someone that you're currently crushing on? I know some of you guys said that you're in the live stream just to support the channel, and I super, super am grateful, super grateful for that. But I'm curious to know how many of you guys currently have a crush? Write either yes in the chat or no, a simple yes or simple no. That way, I can get a, just a range of where you guys stand. Who has crushes? Who doesn't? If the majority of crushes, which I'm assuming you do, um, this video I think will be super helpful for you because I'm hoping by the end of the five points I lay out that you guys will feel like you can take action steps. All right. Let's check to see. Saddles says, yep. Awesome March says, yes. Atlanta Boy, thumbs up. Zianna says, yes. Super Kid says, yes. Sebastian says, yes. The BFF Squad says, yes. Josh says, yes. Atlanta Boy, yes. Rossin, yes. Andy, yes. Elijah, yes. Too Much Bread, yes. Zian Wolf says, yes. 
Uh, Iman Mohammed, uh, Iman Mohammed, uh, says yes. Uh, Level says yes. Oziel gave a thumbs up. Kevin, Kevin, yes. Elena Boy, yes. All right. All yeses. I see. I haven't seen one no in here. So, um, I'm happy that, uh, that, that you guys are here and I hope this live stream could bring you a lot of value. So I want to jump into the very, very first uh, point here. The first way that I think you can get uh, a girl or your crush in general to like you back. And I think that's a simple one. And that's to be true to who you are. Don't fake it, right? Being true to who you are is one of the simplest things that uh, on paper, it sounds so simple. Like, okay, just be true to yourself. But what does that really mean? When I say be true to who you are, I mean, um, there, there should be a level of congruence in how you act when you're around your friends, when you're around your family, when you're around your crush, and when you're just by yourself. A lot of times when we're around our crushes, we get nervous. Our palms get sweaty. We start to feel all itchy and scared. And, and we start to worry that, you know, we start to worry, hey, do they like me? Do they not like me? Are they looking at me? Are they thinking about me? All these questions start to pour into our head and it starts making us feel super nervous, super anxious, super insecure and self-conscious. So being true to yourself really means recognizing that when you talk to your crush, when you interact with them in that moment, that you're being your real self. You're not faking it just so that you look cool or look comfortable in front of them. You genuinely feel confident in that approach. You feel confident in how you talk to them. Now, this is super important in getting your crush to like you back because if you're not congruent, if you you are faking it or pretending or acting like, you know, you don't care about them. You're not thinking about them. Uh, then, you know, the, yeah, they're going to start to see that the real you is not going to be the same you when they really get to know you. And that's an important thing. When you have that first impression with someone, when you first start talking to them, you first start getting to know them. Uh, if a person sees that you're changing over time or your behavior is changing over time, then they're going to feel like you weren't authentic with them. You weren't really being you. I think uh, Donna the Gamer wrote <laughs> says it best. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on us. <laughs> I already mom spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> quoting um, um, eight mile there, but I think it's a good quote to, to stick in here. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm curious how many of you guys have been in that situation where you felt super nervous just being around your crush. I know some of you guys, um, your crush is your best friend and your crush is someone that you've known for a while. But I think in any case, when you're around someone that you like, there's always that little nervousness that comes up. And that nervousness is normal, right? I'm not telling you to um, pretend not to be normal, uh, pretend not to be nervous or just ignore it. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. I think the question really comes down to how do you start to build that confidence in just sharing what you feel, being honest, talking to them, opening up to them. A lot of times we will, uh, maybe you're a talkative person or you're, maybe you're someone that likes to share ideas, but when you're around your crush, you shut down. You don't say anything. You give them one word answers. You don't make eye contact. You don't acknowledge them. You don't acknowledge that they're there. All these different things start to come into play. So really, when I, when I really come down to talking about uh, being true to who you are and not faking it, being true to who you are is if you're the kind of person that likes to share your opinion, even if your crush is there, even if you're talking to your crush, do your best to really share that with your crush, to tell them how you feel, um, tell them what your thoughts are on things, tell them how you're experiencing things. Because the more you keep things hidden, the more you don't interact with them, the less likely they are to like you back. Uh, this is something that I suffered with when I was in high school a lot. I'm curious, guys, we'll do a quick chat poll here as I say this. Um, do you feel like it's difficult for you to just open up and be yourself when you're around your crush? I want to get thumbs ups and thumbs downs here, or yes or no if you if it's easier to type it, but thumbs up emoji or thumbs down. Do you feel like it's difficult to be yourself around your crush? I suffer from this so much when I was back in high school. Every time I was around my crushes or when I talked to them, I would just become a different person. I wasn't the talkative, fun, normal Josh that I always thought I was. I was this kind of awkward and shy and very hesitant you know, speaker in front of my crushes. And I think a lot of those interactions didn't go how I wanted them to because I didn't feel comfortable being myself. Tyler Wan says th gives a thumbs up. I'm seeing a bunch of thumbs up. Too much bread, thumbs down. So too much bread feels comfortable around his crush. Super Kid says yes. Atlanta Boy, thumbs up here. A uh, thousand subscribers without a video. That's cool, man. I uh, hope you get it. Uh, this guy is such a virgin. Oh, I'm the virgin. Oh, okay. So thousand subscribers without a video. Um, you should definitely check out my video. I'll link it up here once this video goes live. It's going to be my uh, how I lost my virginity story. I think it's an interesting video for you to check out, but I definitely think it's worth watching. 
So a bunch of thumbs downs as well. Cheyenne Hall feels totally comfortable being around their crush. Ross and Yonda, thumbs down, uh, doesn't feel com uh, feels comfortable being around their crush. Saddles, lots of, th oh, lots of thumbs up. Uh, Oziel Gomez, thumbs up as well. So yeah, so there's majority leaning on people not feeling too comfortable being around their crush. And then some of you guys do feel comfortable around your crush. But I still think this is an important point to nail home. Being yourself means um, talking whenever you have something to share, um, not being afraid to make eye contact or to smile or to say hi to your crush whenever you see them. I'm not saying that's an easy thing to do at all, but I think when we're talking about how do you get your crush to like you back, that's gonna be one of the first steps you need to start taking. Being okay with the idea of just saying hi to them or uh, asking for their opinion on something, talking to them. Just being open in your honest self even just putting that idea in your mind that when you see your crush, you're going to be your honest self. Just thinking about that idea is the first step towards getting them to like you back. Uh, I want to jump in here and see what some of you guys are saying, what some of you guys are dealing with as well. So if you have questions, leave them in the chat now and I'll jump in and answer some of your questions. So Zian Wolf says, yeah, sometimes mainly when I'm by myself and they're, and they're with their friends and by themselves. Yeah, your crush being with them, their friends can be a totally intimidating situation. It can make you feel like... Um, it can make you really feel like, wow, like the world is against me now. All of them are together. They're all going to stare at me. It's going to be awkward. They're going to look at me. Uh, you know, there's always a fear that comes with your crush being with their friends. But I did a video on this not too long ago about how you can kind of use them being with their friends to your advantage. And a good way to go about doing that is when they're with their friends, approach the entire group. Don't go into the don't go into the situation thinking I'm only going to talk to my crush. Go into the situation thinking I'm going to talk to my crush and their friends. Because the, what I've learned over the years is that if you approach a group and you only talk to one person in that group, everyone else is going to stand around watching you thinking like, what are they doing? Uh, this is awkward. But if you go into the group and ask, let's say a general question, hey guys, the new Captain Marvel movie just came out. Have any of you guys seen it? Asking that open question to everyone in the group, now everyone can kind of share their input, share their ideas. If your crush says something, you can you know, engage with them in a conversation, but now everyone feels like they're part of the conversation and no one feels awkward, no one feels weird because it's a group conversation now. So it can actually be easier to handle. Uh, let's see, some of the more things you guys are saying here. Abigail Olson says, you should make videos for kids in middle, middle school and grade school because like we know, we know we can't date, but how do we get each other's attention? Abigail, that's a really, really good point. Um, I'm planning on doing more videos, uh, probably not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it on this channel, if I wanna do something separate, maybe a video series or a course that's gonna be built specifically for people that are in elementary school or early middle school on dating and what that actually means. You know, like you, you, like you said, Abigail, it's like you guys can't go out on a date, you can't go out together and hang out and do whatever. So maybe dating, you know, for someone who's a lot younger might just mean talking to each other on Instagram, talking to each other when you see each other in school. You know, the term boyfriend and girlfriend may just mean a really close friend rather than an actual like romantic boyfriend, girlfriend. So I think that's important to address those things. I definitely want to figure out how to address it because I think the majority of my audience here on YouTube isn't really elementary and middle school people. So they might feel like those videos aren't like relevant for them, but I definitely, I definitely want to create something for that age range. So Abigail, stay tuned. I'll put something together for that. Uh, yeah, Johanneton Wexler says, by the way, got an update, got an update for you. Cool. Um, Oh, not cool. Me and my girlfriend broke up after three months, but I ended it. I ended it okay because both of us did, didn't have much time for each other. Okay, yeah, man. I hear you coming from on that. You know, sometimes it's hard to maintain a relationship. It's not easy, guys. Uh, a big challenge with maintaining a relationship is making time for each other. And if you have schoolwork, if you have after-school activities, if you have chores at home, and you just want free time adding a partner into that equation might just be too much for you. It might just be overwhelming. You might just need a break. Um, you might not have the time to spend, let's say an hour or so talking to them on the phone or video chatting or just texting them or something. And you know, there's so much more that comes into it. Rumors flying around school, not seeing them in person enough, getting bored of it. All these different things can factor into your relationship and your relationship status. So I get where you're coming from. Sometimes it just makes sense to walk away. Uh, let's see some of the other things you guys are saying here. All right. Phoenix says, All right, after I got friend zoned, it's a lot harder to be myself around her. How do I fix that and move on? That's a good question, Phoenix. So after you got friend zoned, um, you feel like it's more, it's, it's a lot more difficult for you to just be yourself around her 
you know, and you want to kind of change that. This can be a challenge too, guys. When you when you get put in the friend zone, or girls here, when, when a person gets put in the friend zone, uh, no bananas to be seen for miles. Thomas Turner is correct. The bananas have been kept at bay. We we can get you guys can go crazy with the bananas at the end. Uh, but for now, I'm happy. I'm happy the bananas are at bay. Um, anyway, so when you're in the friend zone and when you are kind of um in that position where you know, your crush doesn't really like you back, but you guys are kind of still friends. You kind of still know each other. What do you do about it? I think that a lot of times we ask ourselves, okay, well, how long do I have to wait before I can uh, ask them out again? Or, um, you know, should I just move on completely? Should I stop being their friends? All these different kinds of questions pop up when we talk about being in the friend zone. Honestly, I think the best thing for a person to do is to kind of uh, let them be, right? If they are not interested in you and they don't want to continue a relationship, um, you have to ask yourself if you feel comfortable with just being friends. Because a lot of times people will tell themselves, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with just being friends, but they might get jealous if they get a boyfriend or girlfriend. They might feel sad if they see them talking to someone else. They might just feel hurt if they just can't be in a relationship with them. So if those feelings start to prop up, on top of just not being with them, it might make sense to also just kind of let them go and not really be a close friend to them anymore. It's a big decision to make when you're in that friend zone and you're dealing with that, but um, I think it's something that it's possible for everyone to kind of figure out on their own. So um, Atlanta Boy says, uh, Josh, when will you check your DMs? I have a question regarding why I've, I've seemed to lose interest in sports in the last few weeks and don't want to lose the interest in them and don't know why. Yeah, so guys, when it comes to checking my DMs, and for those of you guys that don't know, um, you can always follow me over on Instagram after this, I'll plug it now, I guess. After this live stream, I always jump on Instagram for what I call the Instagram after party. All the cool kids are there. It's a lot of fun, guys. Um, it's pretty much like this live stream, but it's there on Instagram. And I bring you guys on. So we video chat. I answer questions live there. It's just a cool thing to be. So cool thing to do. So you should definitely go follow me over on Instagram at the Josh Speaks. Uh, as far as answering my DMs and getting to those, I'm super behind on DMs. I try my best to answer every DM that I get. It just takes me time. So maybe I'll dedicate uh, an hour or two hours a week to just boom, try to answer as many people as I can. Um, it's getting... It's getting way more difficult uh, as time goes on as more and more people follow me and send me messages, but I'm still trying my best to answer as many people as I can. Um, when it comes to getting my attention right here, right now, you can always use the super chat. I'll see those messages pop up. Um, Dono the Gamer says, my crush has a boyfriend, sadly. Sorry to hear that, Dono. That doesn't mean that these tips won't work uh, as far as future crushes and things like that. So I think it's important to also think contextually, um, where can I apply them? Um, maybe not for this crush, but for the next crush. So I wanna get into the second way to get your crush to like you back, guys, because they all kind of tie into each other. And I think it's gonna tie into a lot of the questions you have. The second way to get your crush to like you back is to show interest in their interests. Now I know, that might sound like a simple point, right? Like, okay, just show interest in their interest, but it's actually one of the key points, I think, in really getting someone to like you back. Because by when you talk to someone, when you learn about them, when you show interest in what they care about, they're way more willing to open up to you. They're way more willing to share the things that they like and to, to be honest with you. And that's a key point here. One thing I've learned over the years is that Whenever I talk to anyone, if I'm only talking about myself or I'm only talking about things that I like, that person gets bored of the conversation really quickly. But when I ask them a simple question like, what do you, what's your passion? What do you really, really care about? Or what do you like to do for fun? Or what's your favorite movie? Or do you have any pets? Or have you ever traveled any place cool? When I ask these questions and people hear it and they have a fun answer to give, they light up. They feel so excited and so happy that they, they uh, that they get to share a piece of their story, a piece of their lives, a piece of their experiences with other people. And that's an amazing thing to experience. It's amazing to know that there's someone on the other side that wants to hear you, that wants to listen to you. So the reason why I say show interest in your crush's interest is because the, the way that they're going to start to like you back is if they start to see that you're someone that actually cares about what they have to say, right? If you only interact with them on a very, very superficial level, meaning it's just you think they're attractive, they think you're attractive, well, that's fine and that can work in the very beginning, but as time goes on, you're going to start to see that the two of you don't mesh personality-wise. And what you really want in, in terms of getting someone to like you back is for the two of you to mesh personality-wise. Take it from me, this is something I, I've learned 
uh, and I've been been in those situations for for years on end. Um, anytime I've ever talked to in the past, anytime I've ever talked to a girl, I've learned that you know I can talk about basic things, but the moment I start to really dive into the things that they like and ask questions, wow, why do you really like that movie? Um, you know, like, oh, cool, you've been on that trip. What did you really like about that experience? Or, oh, awesome, you're really into programming, you're really into games, like, tell me more about that. They just really feel more comfortable just being themselves around me. Archie B Gaming sends a super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat, Archie. Archie says, could I get a follow on Insta and ask a few questions? Archie, absolutely. Uh, what's your Instagram? Just, I'm assuming it's, is it Archie B Gaming? If it is, let me know, but um, if you want Archie, just, Message me on Instagram and let me know that you're Archie and I'll follow you back, man. And you can we can chat on there. Thank you so much for the the pound and ninety nine. What would you say? Like you'd say a dollar ninety nine. Would you say a pound ninety nine? I guess um, I don't really know, but yeah. So that's a key piece, guys. It's a really key piece to really spend time learning about other people's interests because, and it's a good practice to have because it really shows people that you're listening to them. Being a good listener is one of the most attractive qualities a person can demonstrate because if you're not a good listener, then that person's never going to feel like they can just be themselves around you. And all of this comes back to a person being themselves. Thomas Turner says one pound and 99 pence. Ah, that's how you pronounce it. Um, I knew, I knew, I knew I was saying something wrong. My Insta is Archie Bow Bowden. Okay, Archie, um, if you want, join the Instagram after party after this, and I'll uh, make sure to, to add you on. Or after this live stream, I'll make sure to do that. Thank you so much for the super chat, guys. For any of you guys, if you want me to follow you over on Instagram, just uh, let me know. Uh, shoot me a DM. Let me know if you guys want me to follow you back. Um, I do like following back Instagram accounts of people that post about their lives and their experiences. So if you have like a meme page or something like that, I'm probably not gonna follow it. Um, but if you have a page where you're posting about your experience, you know, like pictures of you and your life and stuff, and you know, I like following those accounts and like to see your guys' progression. Um, okay, so I wanna jump in here and ask another chat poll question. I wanna really get your guys' opinion on this. Um, but when it comes to, I'm just looking at the chat as I read this. All right, let me get back to the chat poll question. So when it comes to uh, learning about your crush, um, have you ever asked your crush about their interests before? I know this might seem like a weird question, but I think a lot of people don't even think about that as an option. So let's get yeses and nos in here, or thumbs up and thumbs down, whatever you guys want. Um, have you ever asked your crush about their interests? Hey, what do you like to do for fun? Hey, what are your hobbies? Hey, what movies are you into? Hey, what sports do you like? Um, so those type of things, oh, we may need to kick the inverted duck. Uh, one of the mods just kick this guy, but, um, yeah. So I'm curious to know how many of you guys have been in that situation where you've been able to talk to your crush and ask them that question. Uh, I think it's an important question to ask, especially if your crush doesn't really know you that well, because they may start to look at you differently. They may start to say, it's like, wow, I, I'm surprised this person, I'm surprised this person, um, you know, cares about what I have to say or cares about me in some way. And that might open up the dialogue now where they can share something with you. They can share something personal that you may have an experience with too. So say for example, they tell you, oh yeah, like, um, what do you like, what do I like to do for fun? I love playing Fortnite. You love playing Fortnite too. Then the two of you now have something in common. So by asking that simple question, what do you like to do for fun? What are your hobbies? It becomes so much easier for you to really, really see where the two of you connect and to start to win them over. Uh, I want to hear what you guys are saying. Emma says no, she never asked that question. Nicholas gave a thumbs up. BFF Swad said yeah, yes. Tyler Wan says I haven't because I think it sounds desperate. Ah, that's a good point, Tyler. I think that in order for it to not sound desperate, uh, it all comes out. It all comes down to how you phrase it, right? So you might want to phrase it in the context of something. And I'll explain that context in a second, but I want to just uh, answer. I want to read off some of the more people's answers in here. Um, Yohanneten Wexler says, yes. Killjoy says, once I accidentally, once, but I accidentally interrupted her and her friends. Okay, okay. Miranda says, nah, too scared. Jack Wright says, nah. Vest Games says, kinda. She really shows what, uh, she really shows, uh, she really shows what she's interested in. I don't know if you meant to say rarely or really, but okay. Mr. Yolo says, I can never talk to my crush because she is surrounded by her friends 24 seven. That's a good point. I'm gonna, I think I need to tackle that topic again. How do you kind of break your friend, your crush away from their friends? Um, 
Let's see. Andy. Uh, oh, Archie B Gaming. Thank you again for the uh, super chat. That I believe now is 70, 79 pence. I think I'm learning the British currency. Uh, or is it is it the euros? I don't know anymore. I'm confused, guys. I know the American currency. <laughs> I'm starting to understand Canadian currency. I still don't get the full names of everything of the European currency. But thank you again, Archie uh, B Gaming, for the super chat. I appreciate it, man. Um, so yeah, I'm just reading through here. Uh, so but I want to I want to really dive into deeper into this idea of not sounding desperate. Uh, we might have to kick 1,000 subscribers to the other video as well. Anyway, so when it comes down to um, not sounding desperate in talking to this person, in in telling your crush how you feel, uh, the way to avoid that is like this is how it phrase it, right? It might sound it might sound desperate if you are just walking up to them and saying, hey, so what are you into? What do you like to do for fun, right? That might sound desperate. It might sound weird and out of place. I think the best way to work it into a conversation is like this. You might want to walk up to your crush. Let's say your crush is with their friends. You might say like, hey guys, me and my friends are trying to figure out um, what the best video game is or what the best movie is or so something else more specific to something that you like, right? Maybe you like video games. Maybe you play Fortnite or, or another game. Um, is Fortnite still the popular game, guys? I know Fortnite is kind of dipping down. What's like the most popular game right now? You guys can answer in the chat. I'm curious. Um, so you walk up to the group. You say, hey, guys, I'm curious. Me and my friends were, were having a debate over this being the best game. Let's say Fortnite for now. Fortnite is as the best game out there. What do you guys think is the best game out there right now? They would share their answer. Oh, this game, this game, this game. You say, oh, cool. Apex Legends, that's the one, right? Apex Legends is the one that everyone's talking about. So, um, you know, you guys talk briefly about, let's say, video games. And then you might want to say, all right, cool. Other than video games, what do you guys like to do for fun? Like, what are your hobbies? So what you've done is you've come in with a conversation piece, right? You've asked the question, hey, is this the most popular game? Everyone kind of shares their basic opinion. And then you've shifted to, so what do you guys like to do for fun? What are your hobbies? And it just seems like a natural flowing conversation. It doesn't seem like you're abruptly asking or you're acting desperate or saying anything desperately. Um, so there's always that kind of you know transition that you can take there. I think that's the best way to kind of go about doing it, guys. So... Like I said, if you don't want to sound desperate and you want to kind of make it flow naturally, I would take that approach. Approach with a question and then lead into the what are some of your hobbies, what do you like to do for fun question. Um, I'm just reading down to see a bunch of you guys are naming off video games. Minecraft, Smash Ultimate, I love Smash, uh, Ark Survival Evolved, Forza, for, uh, Forza Horizon. Um, let's see. Fortnite, more like two weeks, am I right? <laughs> So, okay, so uh, CJ says, Josh, thank you so much for responding to my DMs. Me and my crush have a thing, uh, has a thing now. Much love, Josh. CJ, I'm super happy for you. Congrats, man. I'm, I'm proud of you, man. Keep up the good work. Uh, and for any of you guys, if you guys are succeeding and going after what you want, you're pursuing your dreams, you have crushes, anything that's working out for you and you feel like my advice has been helpful, let me know. I, I, I love to know what your guys' progress is and how you're making moves. Okay, I want to jump into the third point here. Um, this one I think is going to be a little bit more specific to things that you can do. Um, this is something I've, I've received a few DMS in the recent, I guess, week or so, or not even week, maybe like a few weeks, um, from a few different people who have said these different things. So I want to kind of cover this one in order to get your crush to like you back. There is a level of your appearance that does matter. Let's be honest here, guys. Appearance does matter to a degree, but I think it doesn't matter as much as you guys think it does. And I don't think you're prioritizing specific things about your appearance. So here's a few things that I think you guys just need to kind of tackle some of the basics here. The first one being you guys need to kind of clean yourself up more. And to do that, that means showering daily, wearing deodorant, um, you know, like shampooing, conditioner, uh, wearing clean clothes, uh, wearing clothes that aren't wrinkled, let's say, going to school with just wrinkled up, dirty clothes. Uh, a lot of appearance really comes down to more so basic hygiene things. And the reason why I bring up hygiene as a basic thing that ties into um, ties into your, getting your crush to like you back, it's that a lot of times, you know, as you guys are kind of entering that age where, you know, like your armpits are starting to stink or whatever it may be, you may not take notice of that, right? Like it's the same way that if like your bedroom smells, you don't notice it because it's your bedroom, you're always there. But when you like, when someone else comes in and they smell it, they're like, oh my God, this, this room stinks. And it smells like sweat or whatever the hell it would smell like. So 
you know, you run into those type of situations where you may not notice these things about yourself, but it's important to stay on top of them. So showering daily, wearing deodorant, basic things like that can make a huge difference in getting your crush to like you. A lot of people think like, oh, your crush is like, you know, like your crush is just going to like you, uh, you know, um, you know, without noticing these things, but these things are noticeable, right? As you guys are entering that age where they are noticeable, I think it's an important point to make. It's an important point to kind of stress because I think a lot of people struggle with that. Now, down in the gamer mentions acne, acne, trust me, man, I had the worst, not the worst, there were kids were worse, but I had pretty bad acne in high school, right? And that's another piece too. I think, thanks for bringing that up, Donald the Gamer. I think that uh, a big piece of it is um, washing your face every single night, putting on lotion and moisturizer. Um, a lot of people let oils build up in their face and then they just go to sleep and they wake up and the oils stay there. And that's how you develop a lot of acne and pimples. I think basic hygiene things, developing a self-care regimen is so, so important. And this goes for girls too, um, because girls are not exempt <laughs> from these issues as well. It's important to kind of do your best to take care of these things. Now, what I don't think you guys should do is feel, for example, acne. I don't think you should feel self-conscious to the point where, well, I can't talk to my crush because I have so much acne. Because because here's the thing, guys. I had lots of acne in high school, and I personally think that it wasn't my acne that held me back from talking to my crushes and getting closer to them. Ooh, sorry. I, I really do believe that it was my confidence level because there were other guys with acne, right? Other guys that were acne, but they were way more confident than I was, and they talked to all the girls that they wanted to. They had girlfriends, they had flings, they did whatever the hell they wanted. And here I was blaming my acne saying, oh no, this is what's holding me back. No one's going to like me because of this. We all start to develop acne uh, as we get older, guys, as you guys start to enter that age. I see a bunch of you guys sharing it. So let's do a quick poll here. Raise your hand or post a hand emoji, hands up or whatever, if you've dealt with acne or you're currently dealing with acne before. Let's get, let's get some hand emojis in there so, to know that we're not alone in our experiences, guys. <laughs> Dabber Boy says, how do I get my, my video game crush to like me? By the way, her name is Lara Croft. I don't know, Dabber. That's a tough one. I'm not sure how you can get her. Okay, Cheyenne, thumbs up. Killjoy, the clap emoji there. Emma Peterson, thumbs up. Gamer Buse, thumbs up. Donna the Gamer. Skirt, skirt. Or skeet, skeet, I guess. Skirt, skirt. Jax, thumbs up. Sebast Sebastio, super kid, thumbs down. Thomas Turner, thumb, hands up. Nicholas says, kind of. Avengers, you know fist. Uh, Mr. Yolo, I have a bit of acne. Simon, hand up. Uh, Yohana 10, hand up. Sam says, yup. Kill, Killjoy says, just one small pimple. Dabber Boy, thumbs up. Uh, Benji says, acne, right over here. Uh, Mike, Michael, Mikolos, hand. Dario, uh, hand up. A lot. It's hard to say hand a lot. <laughs> hand name, hand name. Okay. But yeah, so just so you guys know, you're not alone in your experience. All of us kind of have acne and things like that to deal with. Hygiene is such a tricky thing as you think as you're getting older because, you know, sometimes you may feel like you're on top of it, but then it like springs up and it makes you feel insecure and, and depressed and like things aren't going to work out for you. But like I said, it's important to take care of these things as much as you can. Shower regularly, wash your face, uh, do all these different types of things, but don't let that be the barrier to hold you back. In order for your crush to like you, they're generally going to want to see that you are making that effort to take care of yourself. If you're the kind of person who's just kind of very frumpy, you wear wrinkled clothes or um, you come into school, let's say, smelling because you didn't put deodorant on, that's going to only push your crush away. And I think it's important to kind of say, like, if this is a small thing that you can do, a very, very small thing, just put deodorant on in the morning, just wash your face in the morning and during the day, let's say, or, or when you go to sleep, these small things can make a huge difference in getting your crush to take more notice of you, to actually pay attention to you more, and to interact with you more, and to, to feel comfortable doing it. So, yeah, I'm going to jump in and answer some of your guys' questions here. I'm curious. Um, so far, based on the things that I've shared, do you guys feel confident? Do you feel like you're starting to feel like, hey, you know, these are small, actionable steps that I can take? And also, I'm curious to hear what your guys' crush's situation is. So feel free to jump into the chat now and start to ask your questions, say what you have to say. Um, let's see. Tyler wants says, I think having acne contributes to your confidence. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Tyler. I'm not, I, I don't believe at all that they're separate. I think that if you have acne, you're dealing with it. It's, 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 I'd say impossible to be like, oh, I, doesn't, I don't think about it at all because you do think about it. But I don't think it should be the roadblock to you talking to your crush. It can make things harder, but I don't think it should be a complete roadblock. 
My, Mario says, I brush my teeth all the time. My oral health is good. My teeth are stuck yellow. Yeah, Mario, I, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I think there, you know, one thing you might want to do is to talk to your dentist and your dentist might be able to recommend some kind of teeth whitening thing. But um, like I said, you do whatever is within your power, right? If you brush your teeth all the time, um, maybe it's certain foods that you're eating that are, are staying, maybe, maybe certain things can have effect on your teeth. Honestly, the best thing would be to talk to your dentist and to explain your situation to see what their expertise is on this situation. Um, Avenge, Avenger says, why the hell they flirt with everyone? So if your crush is flirting with everyone, I think that that could or could not be a good thing for you, right? If your crush is flirting with everyone, that might mean that they are just a flirty person. That's just how they are. But it also might mean that there's no one that stepped up yet to ask them out. And that's where you stand in here. That's where you come in, man. It's important for you to step up and to ask them out. Uh, Don of the Gamer brings up another point here. Uh, my dentist said that I didn't need braces. My crooked tooth says otherwise. Yeah, so braces is another thing too. Braces and glasses and all these different types of things. Any kind of change that we're not familiar with. I remember I had braces when I was in junior high school. I, I was going to do a video on that a while back. I forgot about that. I got to find that picture of me with the braces, the full-on braces, guys. But, um, you know, having braces might make you feel like, oh, I look weird. I look silly and stuff. Um, any of these kind of changes. Wearing glasses might make you feel like you're not good enough or your crush is not going to like you. But like I said, deep down what it comes down to is this. Everyone around your age is changing and they're growing and things are happening and their bodies are entering all these new stages. So your crush is not going to dismiss you when 90% of everyone else in, in your school or around you is dealing with it too. It's just the normal part of life. So if you can work towards getting past it, your crush can work towards getting past it too. But if you shut it down right from the beginning and say, oh, I can't talk to my crush because I have to wear glasses. Oh, oh, my braces are going to make me look weird or my, my teeth or my hair or whatever it may be, my, my body weight, all these different things are going to hold me back. I'm not going to go for it. Well, yeah, if you run into those situations and you are pretty much stopping it, then there's no chance for your crush to get to know you better. So you want to do what you can to take care of your hygiene, take care of your health as best as you can. And then I think as you go forward, when you talk to your crush, your crush is going to see that you're making that conscious effort and it's going to make things easier as you get to know them better. Abria Dodson says, "My crush knows I like him, but he does he doesn't uh, but he does like me and if he uh, he doesn't like me, I guess. And if he does, how do I get them to tell me? I, I don't want to ask him out because I'm a girl and I'm too scared. Abria, I hear where you're coming from on that. I think that um I think from girl's perspective here, it's always tough because I think for some girls they feel like I don't want to ask the guy. I want the guy to kind of ask me. And I get that. I think that my, my, my rule is always this. If you're the person who has a crush on someone, you should be the one to talk to them. I don't ever think that if you like someone, you should wait for them to talk to you because there's no guarantee that they'll ever do it. Now, you may want them to ask you out. That's fine. But I think it's important for you, Abria, to kind of start that initial interaction, to start flirting with them, start talking to them. And when we say ask them out, asking out could be something as simple as, hey, what are you doing after school this uh, tomorrow? Let's go get something to eat. So asking out can mean a bunch of different things. I think that you shouldn't limit yourself to asking out means dating, boyfriend, girlfriend. It could just be taking time outside of school to get to know each other better. Uh, Sam, Sam Lee says, hey, Josh, how do you portray attractiveness when you have a cold? That's a good point, Sam. I think that if you have a cold and you have a runny nose going on and you're just not feeling your best, I think that portraying attractiveness shouldn't be at the top of your list because you yourself are not at the top of your game. You don't feel fully like yourself. You're kind of, you're, you're sneezy, your eyes are running, you know, you have a cold, you just, you feel your, your body's breaking down, you feel bad. Um, I think that in those situations, I wouldn't worry so much about trying to be attractive. Uh, I would recognize that, hey, I have a cold, lots of people get colds, this is a totally normal thing, and I don't always have to be attractive. I don't always have to look good. I don't always have to be cool and fun. There are times where I just may feel down and beat up, and I just, I'm okay with that. As long as you can be okay with it, I think your crush can be okay with it too. Uh, let's see one more here and then I'm gonna get to the fourth point guys by the way if you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this video um, Let's see how many thumbs up we can get to by the end of this live stream And like I said guys if you aren't already following me over on Instagram make sure to go follow me My Instagram is at the Josh speaks We're gonna be doing the Instagram after party right after this live stream so you can come and join in and it'll be a lot of fun Let's see uh, Ax says I have a crush on Instagram. We are from the same city, but I don't know her. She gave me her number, but when I said I like her, she said she wants to be friends only. Ah, Ax, that's a good point. Ugh. 
I think sometimes um, if you meet someone online, let's say you meet someone through Instagram, whether they go to your school or they're just a random person you met on Instagram, uh, telling them that you like them right off the bat might not be the best thing. If you check out my video I did on Monday, I talk about why um, you should, uh, whether or not it's a good idea to text your crush that you like them. I personally don't think it can be. I, I mean, there are situations where, hey, it's fine. But I think for the most part, if you want to develop the best kind of relationship that you can, it's better to convey that in person. Now with this girl on Instagram, she said she just wants to be friends. Most likely she just wants to be friends because she doesn't really know you that well yet. It takes time to get to know someone, especially to if someone tells you that they like you, you have to think about that. You have to ask yourself, well, how do I feel about them? Do I like them back? There's all these kinds of questions that stem up from someone revealing their feelings to you. And it's best to reveal your feelings to someone when you know that you've built something real with them that you know that they can like you back in the same way. Cheyenne Hall says, I'm in California. I'm in New York. Currently, it's 5.41 p.m. right now for me. I'm curious, guys, what time is it over there for you? Write your time, your time zone, wherever you guys are, just so we can get an idea. I know there's a lot of you guys that are overseas, like over in the UK or in Europe in some ways. So uh, there's a lot, lot of people all over the place. So I appreciate the people that are on here late. I know it's late for some of you guys. Josh R says, um, Will this be uploaded later? This will definitely be uploaded later. It'll be live on my channel as soon as it renders and it goes through the YouTube process. Um, 2142, four, Okay, so there's a, oh, so there's a bunch of people over, the, uh, over there on, uh, in Europe. And there's some here that are in, uh, wow, 242 AM? That's crazy. Game reviews. That's late, man. I don't know what you're doing up so late. CJ the Asian. Currently, I'm not taking uh, adding any new moderators right now uh, here on um, my uh, YouTube channel because I have about three or four moderators as is. So I think that we're pretty good here. If, however, you want to uh, apply to be a moderator over on my Discord, you could definitely do that. Um, time to plug the Discord, guys. If you're not already on my Discord, you should definitely join. Um, I created a Discord. All you have to do is go to the joshspeaks.com slash Discord, and we have different kind of little sub-channels on there that we have topics and conversations on. Um, I'm trying to be way more active on it, but there's already a community on there of people that engage and talk to each other. It's a great place to really just join a community of people like you, like yourself, right? That are looking to better their lives, looking to, you know, answer their dating questions or get their dating questions answered. Um, looking for a way to kind of connect with other people that might be going through the same stuff that you're going through. So I definitely recommend for you guys to join the discord if you want. It's a great community, a lot of fun on there. Uh, <laughs> Donna, the gamer says 542 is the superior time. I agree. I agree. 542 is the superior time. <laughs> okay. Darius says, Hey Josh, people keep bullying me through text by saying you're autistic. How can I make them stop? That's a good question, Dario. I think that, I mean, if it's random people and you don't know who's saying it, you don't know like where it's coming from. The best thing you can do honestly is if someone sends you a random text, don't engage back with them, just block them and move on. Because when you engage with them, they see that they're getting to you. They see that they're getting a response. So don't even grant them the response. And I would I would also just stop posting about it too. I, I know that you made a post on Instagram about it because I think sometimes when people see that trolls are getting to you, they may want to troll too. So honestly, I would just totally show the world or pretend like, ah, it's not even happening. It doesn't even matter. I don't even think about it. Um, the joshpeaks.com slash discord doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Hmm. I'm gonna have to check out the link later, but if any of you guys have the link to the discord posted in the, in the chat here, because I can't check right now, but should work. I'll, I'll double check why it's not working, but yeah. All right. Let's get to the fourth point here. And the fourth way to get your, to get your crush to like you back or to get a girl to like you back, uh, I believe is to be confident in talking to her. Cowardice will turn her off. So we talked a little earlier about confidence and what it means to be confident and girl for gr the girls in here too. I know there's a bunch of girls watching as well. Girls, it's important for girls and you guys to be confident as well. Confidence is not just something a guy has to display. Girls have to display confidence too. And confidence comes in lots of different ways to be confident. When you talk to someone means to kind of not shy away from um, just talking clearly, talking honestly about how you feel this is similar to what I was saying before about being being your true self, but being confident as well as to not be afraid to uh, to ask them to hang out if you want to, to not be afraid to say, hey, what are you doing after school today? Or, hey, me and a bunch of friends are getting together. What are you up to? Um, 
<laughs> I see all the Fs. Can I get an F in the chat? <laughs> Press F to pay your respects, guys. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so uh, displaying that confidence really comes down to just taking that leap and showing that person that you want to be around them, that you want to engage with them. Um, a lot of times, if your crush is not sure if you like them back, they're going to be waiting to see how you engage with them, how you kind of ask them out, how you kind of ask them to hang out. So putting that confidence on display means actually making the effort to want to talk to them, to want to spend time with them. I remember when I was younger, um, there was a girl in high school that, um, you know, I was friends with her and she knew that I liked her and she was waiting for me to ask her out. She was kind of waiting for me to make any kind of move. And we would talk every day, we would talk every day, but I never went for it. I never did it. I never kind of took it out of that safe comfort zone, that safe friend zone. Uh, and then after a while, she just got bored and she just eventually started talking to other people. She gave up on me because I just wasn't really making that effort. I wasn't being confident. And I knew I could have got her to like me back if I just displayed that confidence. So for the guys here and the girls in here, I think it's important for you guys to just be honest. Uh, if you like someone, you want to get to know them better, there's no shame. There's nothing to be worried about. And just saying, what are you doing tomorrow? Let's hang out. Or what are you doing Friday? What are you doing this weekend? Now, this is something I want to get a quick chat poll on here, guys. Um, let's be 100% honest. In fact, let's do numbers here. On a scale of 0 to 100%, what would you say your percentage is in terms of you being confident around your crush? Do you feel 100% confident around your crush? Do you feel 5% confident? Do you feel 50% confident? What's your percentage range for your confidence level around your crush to the point where you can ask them to hang out if you wanted to? I know for me when I was in high school, I would say it was like a 20% confidence. And as I got older, maybe it grew. Uh, Rostin says 80, Gamer says 9%, Vestige says 65%, Hoku says negative, is that what, 100,000, negative 100,000, Thomas Turner 17, Donald the Gamer 20%, uh, Johanna 10, 60%, Alex 30, Simon 85, Walter 70, F Tyler 50, I wish I could take all these numbers and just plug them into a chart and get an average range, because that'd be really cool. <laughs> Uh, let's see, 50, Cheyenne says 50%, D Darth says 50, just kind of skimming, Destiny says zero. Jack Wright, 20%, give or take. Um, Avenger says uh, 40%, no more. Super Kid says 10%. Hey, Josh, I haven't ever heard her voice, but I'm too nervous to text her. Also, her being taller than me, is that weird? Super Kid, it's not weird at all. I think that um, given your age, right, given that people your age are growing and everyone's different heights, I don't think it's weird at all. A lot of people feel weird about it, and I think a lot there's this idea that girls love tall guys, but... You guys are still young. You guys are still growing, right? Like, I think this tall guy thing comes in probably when you're a lot older. It's a whole different older person problem. It's not something I think you should worry about so much now because I remember when I was in high school, I saw guys and girls of all height ranges and they all dated and there wasn't ever an issue with that. So I wouldn't worry so much about it, Super Kid. Uh, Dario says, putting my James Bond tuxedo, I feel like 100% confident. Dario, that's a really good point. So, that's something I, I, I want to share with you guys too. An average range, we should suggest a calculator in the YouTube live chat to Team YouTube. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. If there was a calculator or some kind of thing where we can do, uh, you know, like a quick poll. Like I wish polls were integrated into the chat function. That would be so cool. That's something I'm going to suggest to Team YouTube. Just like integrate polls. So I can just put a poll in there. Um, uh, Cheyenne says, you're a good dancer. I know from your Instagram lives. Thank you for checking out my Instagram lives. <laughs> Uh, CJ says, still can't access on your Discord. Huh, what's wrong with that? Is it what, discord.gg slash the Josh Speaks? Anyone can kind of share the Discord link. Please do so. Uh, it's hard to type with all this stuff in front of me. GG slash the Josh Speaks. Speaks, all right. Oh, oh my God. All right, there we go. I think that's the link. Joshpeaks.com should work. That should work too. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, it's the Joshpeaks.com, not Joshpeaks.com. Good point, Hoku. Maybe that was the issue. But yeah, like I said, guys, it seems like there's a range of people. Uh, Zay, Zay Zay says 
Um, there's a range of people all over the place when it comes to feeling confident around their crush. I get that. I get where you guys are coming from on that. Um, confidence is something you have to work on building. I've done a ton of videos on how to start to slowly grow your confidence, but building your confidence is something I definitely want to tackle way more, I think, as the weeks come up. So definitely stay stay tuned for that, guys. This works for polls. Strawpoll.me. All right, cool. I'm going to have to check that out. This person has a 0% chance to steal your girl. I think he's referring to me. I'm not looking to steal anyone's girls. Okay, guys, I'm going to get into the fifth point now. The fifth way to get a girl or your crush in general to like you back is to let them see that you're interested in, in them romantically. Now, this is a point I have to really break down because it can mean a bunch of different things to a lot of people. Letting your crush see that you're romantically interested in them is not flat out confessing your feelings to them. It is not. Um, it is not, um, telling your friend to tell your crush that you like them for them. When I say letting your crush see that you like them, I mean by showing direct interest in them, spending time talking to them, asking them to hang out, learning about them, taking care of yourself and your appearance, doing all these different kinds of things. And, and then on top of that, just asking, like I said before, asking them to hang out is the way to kind of show them that you like them. If your crush feels like you're not making an effort to get to know them better, if your crush feels like you don't care to ask them to hang out, if you don't want to know about their lives, if you're not interested in them, if your crush doesn't see that you're showing interest in them, then they're not going to like you back because no one's going to want to invest in someone else, invest feelings into someone else if they know that it might not go anywhere, right? So I know for a lot of you guys, you might be shy and timid and nervous around your crush and that's the kind of, there's a bunch of factors that are holding you back, but your crush is going to want to see you be confident and they're going to want to see that you like them, right? I think a lot of guys too make this mistake. Um, can you do another Q&A with your wife? Absolutely, Cheyenne. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll post on Instagram. I'll do a poll on Instagram and ask you guys to submit questions and then we can do a Q&A. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, so, oh, Red Lightning, good to see you, man. Um, so what I'm saying there is that I think for a lot of you guys, there's a fear that if your crush finds out that you like them, or if you, um, you know, like express that you like them too soon or anything like that, that you're going to turn them off. But the real key, guys, is to start to show them that you are willing to invest time in getting to know them better. Because if you're willing to take that effort, then there's a high chance that they may start to like you back, right? For any girl or for any guy, if they see that a person is talking to them more, is listening to them more, is showing that type of interest, then they're going to start to ask themselves, wow, this person really cares about what I have to say. Maybe I like them back too. So you want that type of mindset going on. You want them to start thinking in that type of way about you guys. Uh, Super Kid says, Josh, I'm too nervous to talk to her because she's always with her friends and I look like a pepperoni pizza. I get really nervous and stutter. I hear you, Super Kid. Yeah, I mean, that nervousness and that stuttering, I think that one way to kind of, and I think for any of you guys that are dealing with that too, one way to kind of work past that is to try to get comfortable talking to people that maybe you're not as nervous around. So if you're nervous around your crush and their friends, maybe practice having conversations with, uh, practice having conversations with other girls that you're less nervous around. Get into the habit of starting random conversations with people because that's going to help you uh, develop the skill of just easily jumping from conversation to conversation and just having it flow naturally. And as soon as you practice that, then it becomes easier to integrate that to talking to your crush because you can easily just say, okay, well, I know now how to start a random conversation. I know how to keep a conversation going. I know how to just talk to someone. I can apply that exactly the same way to my crush. So here I want to jump in and do another quick chat poll here, guys. Um, I'm curious to know um, when we talk about when we talk about showing your crush that you're interested in them. Do you guys feel like you interact with your crush in a way? This quick chat poll here. Do you guys feel like you inter interact with your crush in a way that they would know that you like them, or do you interact with them in a way that they would have no clue? Meaning you're very silent around them. You're very nervous. Like they would never guess in a million years that you like them. Do you act in a way where your crush knows or do you act in a way where your crush doesn't know? Yes or no guys. So Zay Zay says no. Alex Dixon says no. Phoenix says sometimes. Uh, J Jockna Pro Master says no. Uh, Netheron says no, I don't. Uh, and I should, how do I get her to notice me? Okay. Uh, Thomas Turner says no. Dar Darth says no. 
Uh, Donna says, I haven't seen my crush since graduation year. Rostin says, yes. Uh, Kildra says, I play safe and I told only one that I like her. Uh, yes, well, maybe. Yeah, actually, yes. Sebastio says, yes. Uh, no, some other team will get him. Oh, Red Lightning's talking about something else. <laughs> um, Destiny says, no clue. Cheyenne says, yes. Uh, Simon says, well, okay, so we seem pretty split guy here, guys, between yeses and nos. To some degree, um, your crush can probably guess, yeah, they like me back. And to some degree, your crush will have no clue. So I want to kind of walk through these five steps very quickly again as we're heading towards the end of this live stream, guys. I'm going to end it in just a few minutes. So keep your bananas in those banana holsters. You can let them go in a minute or two. But um, Emma says, no, not uh, not really. N not uh, Nija, 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 I think Nija says yes. Um, so anyway, so quickly walking back through these five points here, guys. When we talk about getting your crush to like you back, be true to who you are. Don't fake it. Always try to be honest around them. Don't shy away from sharing your opinion or letting nervousness hold you back from just speaking out whenever you can. I'm not saying it's easy, but I think it's possible. Two, show interest in their interest. Let that person see that you care about the things that they have to say. Let them see that you are curious about their lives and you want to know what's going on. And you want to know what their experiences are. By showing interest, they're going to feel way more comfortable opening up to you. Number three, clean yourself up as much as you can. Shower as much as you can. Wash your face. Try your best to take care of your acne. Wear deodorant. Wearing deodorant is a huge one, guys. A lot of times people don't wear deodorant and they don't know that they smell, but everyone around them will. And that might turn away your crush. So if you want your crush to like you back, you got to smell good. Four, uh, be confident in talking to them. Cowardice is a turnoff. If you're not confident uh, in, in, in the idea of potentially even asking them out, if, they're, if they see that you're not confident in, in making the approach or making the attempt to talk to them, then they're going to be turned off. They're going to feel like, why do I like this person if they don't like me back? Or they're not showing that they like me. And the fifth is let them see that you're romantically interested. A lot of guys will find safety and comfort in the friend zone. It's become so much easier to just, oh, we're just going to play play it safe and be friends and not push any buttons or not take a chance because taking a chance mean, means I might never talk to them again. So it's better to be risky. It's better to put yourself out there to try because in trying, you guys will learn and you're not going to learn from playing it safe. You're only going to kind of let time go by until someone else asks them out. So those are the five ways I think you can get someone to like you back. You can get your crush to care about you and like you back in a way that you like them. It all comes down to working on your own core skills, guys. It all comes down to really working on improving yourselves and putting yourself out there more. Now, I know it's a journey. I know looking at all the different things that you guys said in the polls and the different kind of mixed reactions, I see that some of you guys feel like you don't have any confidence. Some of you girls too feel like, you don't have any confidence. Some of you feel like you do. Some of you feel like um, some of you feel like super confident. You're ready to go for it. And I totally get where you guys are coming from on that. And I support you and I feel you. I think what it really comes down to is taking those small incremental steps. Everything is small steps, guys. Every opportunity you have to get closer to your crush, whether it's starting a mini conversation, talking to them when they're around their friends, or just getting comfortable with having conversations with other people as practice before you talk to your crush. These are all different ways that you can make those inroads towards getting closer to your crush. So guys, I want you to, to really carry those points. So I'm going to jump in and answer a few more questions. If you have a question for me that's in dire need before I hop off this live stream and head on over to Instagram for the after party, you can always use the super chat function. Uh, we've gotten a few super chats so far. So if you have a super chat question, pop it in right now as I just answered one or two more questions before we end up here, guys. Let the bananas go. Let's let the bananas go crazy. <laughs> all right. Um, Tone School says, Josh, I lost my crush. She sees she, she's still single. Um, Wait, hold on. Chat moved. Um, I lost my crush. She's still single. She's shy. Can I DM to get her? Uh, can I DM to get her? Uh, but I never talked to her. So if she's shy and you've never talked to her before, I think that um, I would try talking to her in person first. You can always DM her, and that might be easier to start a conversation there. You might want to leave a comment on one of her pictures. Or you might want to ask a question on there. I did a video on on how to talk to someone, how to DM your crush for the first time. So that might be a video you might want to check out. I think I'll link it up over here, but that's a good resource to look at. Mr. Yolo says, is it okay to ask your crush if you can speak with them when you meet them in the hallway? I want to ask her to prom. Please help me, Josh. I plan to ask her tomorrow. Mr. Yolo, okay, this is what I would say when it comes to asking them to prom. I think that 
I do need a banana shirt, banana shirt, Atlanta boy. Um, when it comes to asking them the prom, I would just, um, like I said, if you're going to do it tomorrow, um, then it might make sense to just go for it. To say, hey, listen, I, let me ask you, what are you doing for prom? Uh, I don't think you should say, hey, can I ask you a question? And then try to talk to them separately because by doing that, it's going to build up a lot of hype and it might make them nervous. What I always recommend this is that before you ask someone out for prom or before you ask them out to a dance or something like that, what you're going to want to do is spend time getting to know them first and getting to know them better. Maybe even hanging out with them once or twice before prom so that they can get an idea of what it's like to hang out with you um, prior to you going to prom with them because they may not know what that experience is going to be like. Super Kid, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Super Kid says, how do I ask her to FaceTime? That's a really good question, Super Kid. I think a good way to ask her to FaceTime. Now, I don't know if you're talking about the crush that I need a banana merch shop. I think uh, I'm not sure if you're talking about the girl that the girl that you uh, like, but saw you as a friend. But when it comes to asking a girl to FaceTime with you, and that's a good, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a video on that. How to ask your crush to FaceTime with you? Um, when it comes to asking a girl or a guy that you like to FaceTime with you, I think a good way to go into it is that you may want to start with the text conversation. You may want to start typing something and say, "Oh, um, listen, I want to. Can you jump on FaceTime? I want to. I want to tell you something really quickly, and it's too long to type. That might be a sly, tricky way. So many bananas. <laughs> so many bananas. Um, that might be a sly, tricky way to kind of get them to go on FaceTime to talk to you. Say, hey, look, I, I want to tell you something that's too long to type out. And then you can just carry the conversation since you guys are already FaceTiming. Um, but I think it has to start with some kind of conversation. You don't just jump into a FaceTime, right? You want to start with a conversation and lead into a FaceTime. But Super Kid, thank you for the Super Chat. Um, I'm going to do a video on that, breaking that down a little bit in a little bit more detail, I think. Um, because it's the end of the live stream and I definitely want to jump on Instagram here, but thank you guys so much for being a part of this live stream. I hope those five, um, five steps, um, are things that you guys can actively take when it comes to getting your crush to like you back, because I think each and every single one of you guys has what it takes. My, my Josh speak shirt here that you can order. It'll probably show up on the bottom of the videos there, but, um, you can be somebody great. I truly believe you have what it takes, guys. And when it comes to getting your crush to like you back, it's totally possible. But you have to start taking those small steps to get there. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this live stream. Head on over to Instagram, Instagram at the Josh Speaks, uh, to go join the after party, guys. I'll see you over there. Thank you so much for being here. I'm happy to be back to live streaming. And on that note, guys, I'll catch you over there on Instagram. As always, love and peace. See you guys. Oh, I got to press the stop button. I'm like, I'll wait for a 10. <laughs>